Okay, Laura, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Didert, and welcome, everyone. Uh, so I will start, and my colleague uh, Bruno Lapion will take over in a, in a few minutes. So this webinar is organized in the framework of the well-known project uh, that has been going on for more than 20 years in Europe, the Odyssey Muir project, uh, which is supported by the European Commission within the program called Horizon 2020. Uh, this project is coordinated by ADEM, the French Ag Agency for Energy Transition, uh, with the support of Enedata, so Bruno and myself and other colleagues, and Franofer. Uh, it covers more than the EU because it covers also um, UK, Norway, Switzerland, and Serbia, plus uh, EU 27 member states. And the partners of the project are mainly energy efficiency agency or ministry. So the, the project has two main objectives. The first one is the ODC part, is to evaluate and compare energy efficiency progress by sector. And the second part, the mirror part, is to look at the efficiency policies measures that are implemented and to see what are the best measures. So this webinar relates mainly on the first part of the project, so namely on the ODC part, uh, focusing on the analysis of energy eff efficiency trends. You, you can find a lot of information on the website of the project. You have the link here. Uh, you have a database with many indicators, uh, but also five data tools and some analysis at country and EU level. Uh, in particular, you can find a lot of information concerning transport sector in the market efficient tool, uh, which is one, one of the data tool. So uh, this webinar is based on data and indicators that have been prepared in the framework of the project. And because policymakers want to have very well updated data to understand what is going on and to make decisions, we have tried to update data until 2019. So these estimations for 2019 have been prepared by Enedata through a new methodology, which is available through the link provided uh, in this slide. And so the data come from national sources until 2018 and from this early estimate for the last year, 2019. So next slide, please. So this is the content of uh, this webinar uh, concerning transport sector. So first, I will present you the energy consumption and CO2 emission trends of the transport sector. And then I will leave the floor to my colleague Bruno, who will describe you the energy efficiency trends and some conclusions. So first, uh, here we will focus on um, on transport energy consumption. What we call transport energy consumption is the final energy consumption of the transport sector. So it covers consumption of road modes, rail, maritime, and domestic air. It excludes uh, international air transport following Eurostat classification. So here we analyze the trends of transport consumption, GDP, and the ratio of consumption over GDP. And here the trends are for the EU 27. Um, in the graph of the top, we show the trends in base 100 for 2000. And in the graph of the bottom, we show the trends in terms of annual variation. And we distinguish three periods according to the economic activity before uh, the crisis, during, and after the crisis. So what we can see is that transport energy consumption is increasing since 2013 by around 1.4 percent per year. And this follows a return to economic growth. And this trend corresponds to the trend before the financial crisis. So over the period 2000-2007. Uh, we can see that uh, during the crisis, so over 2007-2013, uh, the energy consumption decreased by around 1.6 percent per year. And since 2013, uh, the 
consumption increases 0.7 times less rapidly than GDP, so almost as before 2007, which implies a decrease of the consumption per unit of GDP by around 0.6% per year, so the green bar. Now, if we look at the trends uh, at, at country level, here we display the trend on uh, transport consumption and GDP over 2013, 2019 at country level. Uh, we can see that, that in four EU countries, uh, namely Finland, France, Italy, and Luxembourg, uh, transport energy consumption remained quite stable since 2013. And in Norway and Switzerland, it decreased despite a sustained economic growth of around 2% per year. In uh, 15 other EU countries, uh, the transport energy consumption, so here the, the, the blue bar, increased much less rapidly than the GDP, the orange bar. This is the case, for example, for the Netherlands or UK. So, and this implies a decreasing consumption per unit of GDP for these countries. And as the opposite, for some Eastern countries, we observe the reverse trend, meaning that the transport consumption has grown to, uh, twice, almost twice faster than the GDP. This is the case for Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. Uh, sorry, but previous slide, <laughs> sorry. And which implies an increase in the consumption per unit of GDP. Now, if we look at the trends of transport energy consumption split by mode and by energy. At the bottom, we show the trends by mode, and we can see that the split of transport consumption only changed slightly between 2000 and 2019, with more than 90% uh, going to road modes. Uh, here, cars represent more than half of the consumption, uh, while uh, truck and light duty vehicles around 30%. So this means that between 2000 and 2019, road modes consumption increased at the same rate. Now, if we look on the right side, uh, the trend of transport consumption by energy, we can see that uh, as a consequence of the dieselization of the car fleet, the share of diesel has increased by 12 points in the energy mix until uh, 2010, replacing gasoline. And since 2010, it's stable at around 64%. Uh, we can see also that as a result of measures and targets to promote the deployment of biofuels, in particular the EU Renewable Energy Directive, Biofuels reach a share of uh, 6% in 2019. Also, we can see that the share of electricity remains stable, around 2%. Indeed, despite increasing share of electric vehicles in sales for recent year, the share of electric vehicles actually in the stock is still very low, except for Norway. Uh, this kind of information can be found in the market diffusion tool of the Odyssey project, uh, which is available on the website of the project. And uh, I put the link here in this slide. Next slide, yes. Now, if we look in more detail on trends of transport mode consumption, here we show the trend uh, for the three periods, uh, so before, during, and after the crisis. We can see that since, since 2013, domestic air consumption is growing much faster, three times faster than before the financial crisis. And we observe uh, the same kind of trend for cars. The consumption is growing 50% faster than for the period 2000-2007. Uh, and for cars, this can be explained by the fact that the traffic of cars is growing 60% faster. On the other hand, the consumption of trucks and light duty vehicles is growing twice less than before 2007, despite a similar economic growth, so a GDP increase by around 2% per year. And this is partly due to a slow growth in road freight traffic and in the stock of light duty vehicles for the period 2013-2019. 
So indeed, road freight traffic and stock of uh, and the stock of light duty vehicles are both growing seventy uh, percent slower than before the crisis, and this explains uh, this trend. Next slide, yes. Now, if we look at CO2 emissions trend, here we show the trends on transport energy consumption, CO2 emissions of transport sector, and what we call the carbon emission factor, which is the ratio between CO2 emission and consumption. And here we show the trend in base 100 for 2000. Um, we can see that CO2 emissions follows the trends of consumption with a decoupling from 2004 to 2013 due to a regular decrease of the carbon emission factor during this period. Then since 2013, the carbon emission factor is quite stable. And this is due to the fact that the share of non-carbonated fuels, so namely biofuel and electricity, has stopped increasing. And actually their share in total transport consumption had increased from 2% in 2004 to 7% in 2013. Now it's interesting to focus on the trends of CO2 emissions of new cars because the main policy and measures of the transport sector targeted new vehicles. Uh, indeed, the main measures have been EU standards and labels and some other national measures, uh, fiscal and incentive ones, uh, targeting new vehicles. And these measures focus on specific CO2 emissions expressed in a gram CO2 per kilometer. So here we show the trends of uh, specific CO2 emissions of new cars for the EU27 and the Netherlands and Germany. And uh, these values correspond to test cycle emissions provided by car manufacturers and not uh, real driving conditions. So it's important to, to note uh, the definition here. So what we can see is that at EU level, CO2 emissions of new cars fell by 16% between 2010 and 2016. And according to DG Klima, EU standards and labels are responsible for at least two thirds of the reduction of this reduction. And this is a result of more efficient vehicles but also to a lesser extent due to the penetration of low emission vehicles such as hybrid or electric. Since 2016, we observed a reverse trend. So specific CO2 emissions of new cars have increased. And this can be mainly explained by the fact that there is an increasing share of SUVs with high specific CO2 emissions in car sales. Uh, well, why we show here Germany and the Netherlands is that because Germany is the main uh, EU27 country with the highest level in terms of specific CO2 emissions and Netherlands with the lowest. So we can say that EU countries have a specific CO2 emissions between around the level of Netherlands, so uh, 105 uh, gram CO2 per kilometer and uh, the level of Germany, so around 130 gram CO2 per kilometer. Why the Netherlands is one of the best, this is due to an increasing share of electric vehicles in sales that has played a significant part in the emission reduction. So we can see that given the trends of recent years, it's likely that the 2021 target uh, which, is, which is set at 95 uh, gram CO2 per kilometer will won't be re reached. And uh, the targets for 2025 and 2030 also seem quite ambitious. And the same uh, conclusion can be done for um, vans. Uh, you can find some more data at the end of this presentation. So now that we have seen the consumption and CO2 emissions trends, we are going to look at energy efficiency 
and how energy efficiency has impacted the consumption trends. For this part, I leave the floor to, to Bruno, my colleague. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon or morning or evening, depending where you are. I will try now to say a few words about uh, how energy efficiency has changed in the EU country and other European countries and try to somehow explain the trends that we have seen so far. How do we define energy efficiency? How do we measure it? We, we measure it at the level of the different mode of transport or type of vehicles with different indicators of specific consumption that are measured in physical units. And we have different uh, type of uh, units depending on the vehicles or, uh, or depending on what we want to show. It can be liter per 100 kilometers, KOE, kilogram oil equivalent per kilometer, kilogram oil equivalent per passenger kilometer or per ton kilometer, and so on. For cars, which is the most important mode, as uh, was explained, and for which we have the most data, we can uh, consider uh, three or four uh, type of indicators, as you will uh, see later on. Usually, uh, the technical uh, efficiency progress is measured through the indicators in liter per 100 kilometer. While if we want to have an overall picture of the overall energy efficiency trend, we may use a kilogram oil equivalent per passenger kilometer. The later will include, uh, in, in addition to technical progress, uh, the effect of change in load factor, because we take into account how much passengers are carried by, by each vehicle, and also the, the fuel mix between gasoline, biofuel, and electricity. For cars, uh, for uh, new vehicles, uh, Laura showed you the uh, specific carbon emissions from which we can derive data in liter per 100 kilometer. These data refer to test values. They don't correspond to the real consumption on the road, but on tests made by the car manufacturers that report the information to the consumer. And you know, there have been big discussion about uh, the way these tests uh, were done for mainly for other uh, emittents and CO2. And also we can have that data that refer to the real uh, values, the real average for the stock, which correspond to real conditions of use and take also into account the fuel composition is a blending of biofuel, for instance, which is not really taken into account in the test value. I will start with the trend for, for new cars, uh, following what was shown about the carbon emission of a new car, because this was the main target, as was explained, of policies. The specific emission, specific consumption of a new diesel car and, uh, and gasoline car has decreased. Sorry, sorry has decreased everywhere until 2014, and especially uh, over the period 2007-2014, as is shown here by the, the orange uh, bar for the period of the most rapid progression. And what we see is that since 2014, there is a reverse trend in most countries or a slowdown in the others, uh, which means that the specific consumption is increasing. And as uh, mentioned by Laura previously for CO2 emission and the factors are almost the same here. There are two main factors that explain this uh, new trend since 2014. First of all, a decrease in the share of diesel vehicles, which has decreased from 56% of new registration in 2012 to 34% uh, in 2019 as an average for the EU and in some countries, for them like France, the, the drop has been more, more impressive. And a growing share of SUV. SUV are bigger, they consume more. Diesel vehicles are usually more efficient than gasoline vehicles. So the two effects contribute to increase the specific consumption. Now, uh, if you want to see wha what has been uh, the impact on the specific consumption of the car stock for all the cars on the road, 
which is shown here by the red line, the top red line. This specific consumption is following the uh, trend for new cars that is shown in blue below, with a lag, of course, taking into account the replacement of the existing vehicle by new vehicle. And since 2014, the specific consumption for the stock of cars continue decreasing because of the impact of what happened with new car on the most favorable period that was before 2014, and these cars are penetrating the market now. Uh, what is interesting to see also on this graph is the difference between the test value and the uh, actual values that correspond to real driving conditions. We made a simulation that is shown with the dash uh, green line to see how would have changed the test value for the stock of cars, taking into account the penetration of the uh, new cars uh, and taking into account the test value of these new cars. And we estimate in uh, 2018 a gap of about 10% between the test values and uh, the uh, real consumption of car being used on the road, taking into account the actual blending of the of biofuel, it's gasoline and diesel. And also this gap is growing, as you can see, uh, the difference between the red and the uh, green line. Now, if we focus on the overall efficiency of car, which is the indicators that we will use for, for cars, we have many indicators, but we need to use one to, to draw some conclusion about energy efficiency. And we chose this indicator because the European Commission, uh, when some time ago, uh, advised the countries how to evaluate saving at national level, uh, tag this indicator as its preferred indicators for reporting. What we see is that the progress for the for, for cars has been quite low, only 0.2 percent per year uh, improvement. And by comparing the trend in the different indicators for car, we can see what has been the impact of the different uh, factors. If I take the the, the graph on the right, which corresponds to the most recent period. The blue bar shows that the average efficiency of cars has improved by 0.6%. In other words, the specific consumption has decreased by the same amount. And uh, technical efficiency has increased by, uh, sorry, 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 uh, the, the graph is not uh, wrong, is wrong. I will correct it in the, I, I changed the period. This graph corresponds to the period 2010, 2018, but I thought it was more interesting to show 2014, 2018, but I, I did not change the graph. Uh, sorry for that. But the right number, they are the one that are uh, written on top of the graph. So the progress, which correspond to the blue bar is 0.2 percent per year, and technical efficiency that correspond to the second bar orange is uh, 0.4 percent per year. And whatever the period, there is another factor that lowered the effect of technical progress is the fact that the rate of car occupancy keep on decreasing over the period and tend to increase and offset part of the impact of this technical energy efficiency. This is also more surprising that there are a lot of uh, policies to uh, provide incentive to carpooling, but based on statistics, we observe that on average, the average load factor of a car is decreasing over time. Now, if we have a look at the, uh, at the countries, the different countries, uh, we see that the energy efficiency improvement for cars uh, show very contrasted situation with significant improvements over the whole period for some countries like Greece, Italy, Ireland, in the EU, Switzerland, and Norway. In general, uh, there are some result, some countries with better results since 2014, but on the other side, there are countries where energy efficiency of cars did not improve because of other factors. 
Now, if we look at the energy efficiency of freight transport, road freight transport that include heavy trucks and uh, light uh, duty vehicles, in a majority of countries, this unit consumption has uh, decreased, uh, which means an improvement in the energy efficiency uh, of, uh, of uh, road freight transport. But on the right side, you can see that for some countries, there are negative demand and the, this indicator has increased. Uh, in further analysis, it's possible to also to break down by period. I did not show it here because it would uh, provide too much information, but we can really see the impact of the financial crisis where the, during that period, the efficiency of, of trucks and light duty vehicles uh, got worse. Now the question is, we can review, uh, I show you the example of car, of uh, road transport of goods, but we can look at buses, we can look at uh, train, airplane, and so on, the different modes that are considered in the sector. And if we want to provide a synthetic picture of how energy efficiency has improved, we, we use uh, an indicator that uh, we use in the whole sector that we call ODEX, the Energy Efficiency Index of Odyssey, which takes into account the trend in the specific energy consumption for the different modes, trend, what has been the trend for car, for trucks, and so on. And of course, we need each time to select one indicator. So this is uh, written on, on the bottom of, uh, on the last bullet point, which indicator has been used. And it specifies here that for car, we have, we have used QOE per passenger kilometer following the recommendation of the EU Commission. The same for buses, aviation. For uh, trucks and water transport, we use uh, QOE per third kilometer and so on. And then we express all uh, these uh, indicators by mode in terms of an index of variation, and we weight the index of each mode with the share of each transport mode in the total consumption of the sector. Presently, this indicator is calculated on the basis of eight mode. And we get the following uh, trend that is shown on, on the slide. In blue, you have the uh, average efficiency energy improvement for uh, transport, taking into account what is taking place for car, which is uh, the largest mode with uh, the almost very low energy efficiency improvement, as we have said. Domestic air, which had a significant improvement, but which has uh, uh, saturated a little bit toward the end of the period. And for trucks, we have, uh, with some uh, uh, disruption, a uh, regular trend uh, in terms of decrease. And as I said earlier, that between 2008 and 2012, there has been no more uh, energy efficiency progress for trucks due to the effects of the financial crisis in the fact that the trucks were less loaded or had more empty running, and which affected the, uh, uh, their energy efficiency performance. If we express all that in terms of amount of energy saving, we can say that the energy efficiency progress has saved every year since 2000 an additional volume of around 1.5 m TOE, which is very small for all the EU. We can see also that over the period uh, post uh, the financial crisis 2008-2013, the sa annual saving reached 2.3. They were twice more, they were more important. If we accumulate these savings over the period since 2000, we estimate that uh, the transport sector has saved 28 million ton oil equivalent, which represents 10 percent of the consumption in 2019. Which means that without, without these savings, transport consumption would have been 10 percent higher. 
And what is surprising is that trucks and light duty vehicles are overrepresented. They represent the bulk of the saving with half of total saving, whereas their share in the consumption is uh, much lower. And conversely, the savings for cars are much lower than their share in the consumption, which is all the more surprising that there are few measures targeting uh, trucks. There are now measures, but more recently, uh, which are uh, standards for light duty vehicles. But we have measure for cars that are more ambitious, that have been in place for a longer period. And for all the reasons explained above, uh, have a disappointing results for the moment. If we look at the performance, uh, as was said in introduction, uh, transport sector is the largest sector. But in terms of saving, it is not the most important saving sector. The total saving at EU level in all sectors, industry, transport, buildings, reached 190 million ton oil equivalent for the EU 27. The share of transport in these savings was only 15%, which is twice lower than its share in the consumption. And this is due to the fact that it is the, the sector with the lowest energy efficiency improvement. Now let's look at uh, the uh, change in the model split between the different mode of transport, uh, starting by freight. Everybody knows that there are a lot of uh, policy in intentions to uh, lower the uh, share of uh, goods that is transported by uh, road and to increase the share of rail and inland waterways. But in most countries, we do not see for the moment any impact of these policies. It, it's clear that these policies need long, long time to, to, to be in place and require investment and uh, the effect cannot be on, seen on the short term, but this is quite striking that the share of rail and inland waterways has decreased since 2000 in the majority 20 countries of the uh, European countries. Uh, since 2010, the trend in this decrease is slower than before 2010, which may be explained by the effect of the policies in place. At the EU level, the share of uh, rail and inland waterways has decreased by four points. There are a few countries which, which get uh, quite uh, encouraging results in terms of shift from road to rail and water transport, among which we can quote Italy, which seems to be linked to uh, water transport, sea motorways, Finland, Spain, and Denmark. And since 2010, the Czech Republic. And the two countries with uh, best results are Latvia and the Netherlands in terms of the share of uh, this uh, efficient mode in the total traffic, which is above 50%. For uh, passenger transport, for most countries, there is no significant shift to public transport since 2010. At EU level, it is a stable share. Uh, since 2010, and it decreased by one point, uh, one percentage point uh, before. Slovakia and the Netherlands, the Netherlands uh, get good results in uh, different sectors, as we have uh, seen before. Increase the most share of public transport since 2010 by 4.5 points, which is quite significant. And Czech Republic and Hungary are the country with the highest share of public transport, followed by Serbia, Slovakia, and Austria with a share of 25%. So there is still a, a significant margin to improve the situation in, uh, this, uh, in this field. Now, how can we relate these different uh, trends to uh, what Laura presented earlier as to the change in the consumption. We look here at the decomposition of the factor behind the variation of the consumption of transport. The left bar show you what has been the increase in the consumption. And each time we have two colors, one orange corresponds to passengers, the other one to, to freight. Uh, we can see 
roughly that the passenger is two thirds of the total and the freight one third. So the variation, the consumption increased by four, uh, yeah. The second bar show you the effect of the uh, increased traffic, what we call the activity effect. And between 2000 and 2019, this activity effect contributed to raise the consumption of transport by around 46 million ton oil equivalent. Then the modal shift, which did not go towards the most efficient mode, but the other way around, contributed also to increase the consumption because of a higher share of less efficient mode. And this contributed to raise consumption by five MTUE. So we have 46 plus five MTUE, 51 MTUE are the factor driving the consumption, which have been partially offset by the energy saving which represent about half of this activity and model shift effect, and which lowered the consumption increase to 28 in MTUE. Now, if we focus on explaining what has happened since 2014, since uh, the period where the, the situation uh, has, uh, has seems to deteriorate, where the consumption seems to have uh, uh, kept on increasing according to the its historical trend. The increase in traffic contributed the final consumption by 23 million ton oil equivalent. The model shift continued to increase the consumption. And as energy savings were much lower than before, of course, the consumption increased uh, pro proportionally more than over the period before, which explained why the consumption is back to uh, the trend we experienced before the financial crisis and despite all the policies in place. In conclusion, the energy efficiency progress for new cars has, has reversed for most countries at EU level since 2014 due to the penetration of SUV and the fact that the share of diesel cars has reduced. The energy efficiency program of the car stock is very low and far from the theoretical performance of new vehicles and as a lag, which means that for some years we we'll probably see a decrease in this uh, specific consumption. But as the specific consumption of new car is increasing, we'll probably have an impact, a negative impact on the total stock of car in a few years from now. Truck and light duty vehicle have better results and they represent half of total saving, which is much more than their consumption. Transport lagged behind the other sector in terms of energy efficiency improvement and quite far behind. The objective to raise the share of efficient mode did not show positive results for the moment in the majority of countries, except the very few countries that uh, need to be uh, put forward. And in summary, all these factors explain why the consumption and the emission are back since 2014 to their trend before the financial crisis, as was shown in the first slide of my colleague, Laura. I thank you for your attention. I apologize again for the mistake in the graph that I, I will correct. And we can open the floor for discussion and questions.